Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we are in a town called Palm Coast, Florida, and we're installing one of our backyard systems. You know, we kind of innovated these systems way back in 1997, and over the years and years, we have perfected this system, and it works so good. A lot of other companies have seen our videos, and of course, they're installing these systems too. They've, they've added to them, and there's so many great systems out there on how to do this. On the average, we install three or four backyard systems every week. We install, you know, hundreds of pumps a year, hundreds of pumps a year. Way back in 97, we started off with a Zoller M53, a third of a horsepower. But today we've perfected this. Now we use the Zoller M98 and it's a half horsepower pump. And wow, does this pump work? It pushes three trash cans full of water every minute. That's awful lot of water very quickly. We combine the old technology of gravel perforated pipe with the new technology of styro rock and that is the easy flow. This pipe works so good in a sandy loomy soil that I mean it's guaranteed a hundred percent is going to solve that water problem. Remember there's two parts of every rainwater drainage system collection and discharge. Here we're picking up all the water, sending it to the sump basin, and the pump sends it to the street. This is a great do-it-yourself video. Watch and learn how to install a backyard system. So back here on their screened-in lanai, as it rains hard, water tends to flood up and across the patio. And you can see they use their patio frequently, so they want to stop that water. And basically, we need to put in some collection, which is going to be French drain. We're going to use gravel perforated pipe and the easy flow. We're going to use both. And we're actually going to bring gravel to grade here so that as water comes across the yard, drops into the system. And over here on the corner, you can see the sump basin. We're going to put a sump pump. That pump's going to lift it up and send it all the way out to the front swale. There's a little gully out there. We're also going to attach a downspout. The pump that we're using is the M98, Zoller M98, and it will easily keep up with this flow. So, pretty straightforward job. You guys are already starting to dig, and we're going to get this done today. So, one of the first things we do is we set up the sump pump for the install. And this is a Zoller M98. It's a half horsepower pump. It's actually what we call a grinder, an affluent pump and it's capable of grinding up you know solids that are down in your basin it can even pick up a solid you know a half inch solid um, up to half inch so and push that right through the line it's a really great pump works really good you start take it apart here i haven't glued anything so you can see it you start by putting a male threaded inch and a half adapter it screws into the port screw it on there just as tight as you can with your hand Next, we need a small riser just to get this um, check valve up above that bar, okay? Pretty straightforward. The one thing that you do need to add, if you can see that little hole right here, this is a 3 16 inch hole and it's a pressure relief because the pump is so powerful that if it's dry, if the pit is dry, it'll suck air and that won't allow your check valve to open up. You can see these arrows telling you the direction of flow. Only allows water to flow one way. We don't want our water coming back down the line and spinning the impeller. Also, it makes the pump work twice as hard. So, we're going to put our no hub on here, and then we're going to put a small riser here. From that riser, we actually are still inside the pit, and we want to have a 90 so the line can come out underground. You won't see anything except the lid. So, you can see I went ahead and glued that bottom small riser up and you can see the hole for the check or the pressure relief. Next I'm going to tighten up our no hubs. This is a 5 16 inch bit with your handy, handy dandy black and decker nut driver. You just get it on there as tight as you can, tight as your drill will make it. I've already tightened this one and this one but we leave this one loose because we're still going to plumb some more when we set it down into the pit. Next, on our sump basin, we turn it upside down using a good, strong, sharp hacksaw. We're just going to cut this nipple off. We're 
we're going to do the same thing on the other side because we've got two inlets coming in so let's spin it around you can see this nipple these are kind of preset at the right level and they're not always when you're digging not always where you're going to be but here they are so let's cut this one off sorry i'm doing it with one hand and camera shaking around a little bit we're all set okay i just set up that pump let's review it real quick kind of dark so it's kind of bright kind of dark remember we set it up the pump where we've got the inch and a half male threaded no hub adapter um, then we've got a small riser with a pressure relief got our check valve arrows pointing upwards then we have another small riser with a 90 because remember we're underground so the thing comes out inside the pit and it's going to turn over to the next 90 and go all the way out front this is a real good project for the do-it-yourselfer i mean this only takes a few minutes yeah i've been doing it a long long time but it's something that you guys could easily do and save yourself a whole lot of money parts are not not cheap there's a lot of material here um, this stuff right here very expensive pipe but it works really good pump basin pit discharge collection catch basins you know, you'll be up there you know somewhere around 12 to 1500 to have all your materials in there but you'll still save two or three thousand over paying somebody else to come and do your job okay so we have our discharge trench excavated lines just laying down there right now we're going to hook our couplings up glue all that together and back here in the back everything's coming together real well chuck's plumbing the discharge remember you have to glue each fitting real important you can see our sump pump installed we hooked up the downspout to that as well as you can see and then we've got the easy flow quick drain we're also going to add gravel to this as well is we're bringing gravel to gray we want that water to drop right down through our system we added a catch basin over here to pick up this low spot of water and another one here by the door because this is of course an entrance we'll put the pavers back gravel that section with a little piece of pipe cover it up and we're done Really the hardest thing about this job, I believe, is just moving gravel around. But once you get it back here, pretty simple. You can use your shovel, spread it out. Remember, we're bringing gravel to grade, so this will all, all the water will just come and just go right through this. So remember that each fitting has to be glued. We're using a all-in-one, <clears throat> it's a medium grade uh, cement. You just slide your coupling on next piece we've only got a few more pieces to go and then i'll show you how you set up that discharge we use a three inch grate uh, because the pump is so powerful it would blow a pop-up apart we actually have to secure the grate with a screw because the pump's very powerful so one of the things that we do of course when no one's here is we always leave the warranty card this is the warranty card for the zoller i leave the box as well because there's instructions on the box always get your warranty card so we dry fit the end and make our measurement just to get to the you know we need a little bit of pipe here at the end make your measurement so you can cut to fit that coupling once it gets that cut then we'll glue up this final fitting right here and everything's ready to cover so inside this three inch coupling this is thin walled pvc there is a little donut and it adapts from schedule 40 inch and a half to thin wall PVC. This is not available at Lowe's or Home Depot. You kind of have to find a plumbing supply, or if you if you remember, you can email me. I'll be happy to sell you one. They're about five bucks. Um, you know, shipping. You know, it's really not what we do. But if you really can't find one, be happy to help you. So Chuck's made all his measurements, and now he's just going to go ahead and glue a coupling. Remember, we're using an all-in-one cement. It doesn't take a lot of cement. It just takes a little and it'll weld that together within seconds you slide that coupling on to your pipe give it a little twist so you know it's on there now you're ready to put your next piece on real simple stuff if you've never glued pipe together there's all these books i remember way back in the 70s plumbing with plastic 
PVC for dummies. I mean, there were so many different books out there about how to put pipe together. Working with PVC is one of the easiest things that you'll ever do. And you'll enjoy, once you get this all together, you'll enjoy how well it actually works. Perfect. So we got one last piece to do. Remember, I showed you that donut. We've already glued that inside the thin wall. One of the things that you got to remember is that thin wall PVC and schedule 40 PVC, um, they're really not, even though I'm calling them PVC, one is polystyrene, the other is PVC. They actually don't weld together. It will make a mechanical bond and it's quite strong. So we put some glue on the end of the pipe, a little bit inside of the fitting as well. Now we're ready to slide it together. Remember that you can twist it for a moment, but it will set up. So try to get it nice and straight. Perfect. Now we're ready to go ahead and throw some dirt on there and backfill. So you can see how it shapes up. We've got you know gravel to grade. And remember how this system works. We're using actually two, two things. We're using the Easy Flow, the Styro Rock, that's wrapped with a fabric, it's perforated pipe, because it rains so hard here, and this is so dramatic, this water coming into this area and been flooding this screened in lanai, that we want that water to disappear as quick as possible. So we brought gravel to grade. It drops down through the top layer of gravel down to the bottom of the trench. From the bottom of the trench, it floods up through the styro rock, the styrofoam, into the perforated pipe and is carried over to the sump basin. From the sump basin, we lift it up and we send it all the way to the street with inch and a half PVC. Remember that Zoller M98, it's a half horsepower pump, moves about 90 gallons a minute. So that's like three trash cans full of water every minute. So if you're loading gravel from a trailer, couple tips, use a flat shovel, hit the bottom of that gravel because it's important. It's just like getting the gravel from the yard. You don't see the uh, loader dig into the top of the pile, they dig from the bottom. Take your gravel from the bottom, much cleaner. The other thing that's really important is have your wheelbarrow pointing the direction that you want to go. Once you fill that up with soil or gravel, it's heavy. Why take the chance of it dumping over or spilling? Little tip for backfilling, if you use your rake like a plow, it's not that easy to do, especially in St. Augustine grass. This is a vine. And the secret is to just have you see Chuck, you know, back and forth real quick little strokes. And when it rains, of course, that sand is going to just totally disappear. It's perfect. And we're setting our sod back on. That did a great job. It looks really good. We don't need to back pack it down. It's going to drop all by itself. And we're just about done here. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day. Thank you.